All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Through the Cow. So today is not going to be the same as usual. Uh, it's going to be quite re related to something that's you know greatness. Um, so it's been six days since uh, the global launch of one of the most highly anticipated uh, team ups um, fans of comic books uh, could could have dreamt of, and of course that was Deadpool and Wolverine. So, especially in, uh, you know, the same year that we got Bad Boys 4. So, mm -hmm. you know, team-ups have been is highly anticipated this year. So, oh, the spirit of team-ups, not I only... mean, I was thinking more of, like, Superman, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool, but it wasn't done right. <laughs> but now it's been done right. So, in the spirit of team-ups, not only am I with uh, the lovely and awesome Debbie... As per usual, I'm joined today. We have a special guest. He's been here before, and he's uh, back again for us. So he has been voted. Um, I'll tell you a little story about him. He's been voted by Time Magazine the uh, most handsome Bangladeshi man three years in a row. Um, <laughs> although his brother might have something to say about that. Um, <laughs> He is the brilliant and one half of the Brothers Geek Out podcast, Kibla Ahmed. Oh, thank you for having me on again, guys. And thank you for that awesome introduction. <laughs> uh, he won't agree because he'd think he's the he, he's the good looking one in the family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, definitely. Thank you so much for having me back on, guys. Absolutely awesome. Proud of the journey so far, guys. So keep up, keep up the great work. Yeah. So I said, welcome back. Um, how's your week been? How's how's things been with you? How's family? Everyone doing well? Everybody's doing good, dude. Thank you so much. Uh, kids are growing up. Nia, my my youngest is walking around the house crazy in a nappy <laughs> in this hot weather. Yeah. Bless her, she's trying to get used to the the heat. Uh, but it's been busy. It has been busy. But I'm, I, you know me. I always make time for as much as I can to fill up my days. Yeah. Uh, but Deadpool, Deadpool Wolverine. Oh my god. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. Debs, how you doing? You been all right? Good, thank you. Yes, obviously, uh, the Olympics started, yeah. and uh, gymnastics has been right at the forefront uh, of a lot of the coverage. And used to be one, not to anywhere near, that yeah. but <laughs> it always has a special place in my heart, and I absolutely love it. So, um, and Team GB have done brilliantly, actually better than expected. Okay, male and female teams finished fourth, fourth in the world. Yes, yeah. amazing. amazing. Um, and our two boys, Jake and Joe, have just, I'm hoping it's still happening, will finish in the top 10 of the men's all around, which happened today. So, yeah, buzzing. Ladies tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping this evening to start getting involved with it all because I've, I've missed, I haven't seen much since the opening ceremony, which was super weird. But, um, yeah, tonight yeah. I think like, the, the boxing starts. So it's mm -hmm. the, um, the under 80 kilo boxing. So I might start getting involved in it from, from here on. Yeah, I did not watch the opening ceremony, but everybody I've spoken to says it was just bizarre. Yeah. Um, but I have seen greatness in the sporting activity. Yeah. I, can, I can see why the French protest a lot. And I'm pretty sure, you know, the fact that the amount of money they spent cleaning out the Seine and it's still not ready to be done. And obviously a ceremony... Well, they made people dive in and swim in it this afternoon. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully they well, fixed it. <laughs> like you said, they made people dive in. And just, so you're never going to see those people again. <laughs> it's funny you say that i watched a movie called under paris recently on netflix it's a french oh, movie yeah and it's about that but it's about sharks that develop in the there sharks in the sun, yeah. it, it's actually a really good film but then i was like thinking olympics this film has come out at the same time oh my god and now people jumping in there you're like oh yeah <laughs> i'll say the sharks got you when it's actually e coli and... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you get instantly <laughs> as soon as you get as soon as you get out you just instantly start coughing and losing weight oh my god <laughs> <laughs> oh. in fact because the uh, president was supposed to swim in the Seine to see how clean it was after he spent all that money obviously he didn't all the French people to protest they were I don't know if you heard about it that they um, were figuring out when's the best time for them to all go down and defecate in the Seine so that it arrives good when he gets in it, when he gets in it. That's and there's brilliant. even a website put together by like some like some genius telling people wherever they are near the Seine, like say, okay, he's <laughs> going to swim tomorrow at 12 o'clock. 
well, to you know, two days before at, at 7 a.m., do what you need to do in the water, and but it should travel down with the current and meet him. At oh my God. Point. I mean, I think it's I'm a legit like website pre, pre toilet in yeah. a bag and just take it down and pop yeah. it in. And it actually just like, right, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of people just there, like, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Horrible. In great the... idea, though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great idea. <laughs> great way to put it together, I suppose. Yeah. All right. To our regular viewers, today is going to be um, heavily Deadpool and Wolverine um, related. Um, we do apologize, but sorry, we have to speak about it. And um, <laughs> if you haven't seen it yet, please switch off and come back to it when you have seen it, because this is time for us. Okay. Spoilers. So, spoilers. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So <laughs> starting off. Bigger spoiler, I think, was the fact that Kibbs got to see it. Was it a week or two before? But you only got to see the thirty, a thirty-five minute um, snippet. Yeah, it was two weeks before. Yeah, uh, Marvel ran a like fan event yeah. at the event in Apollo in Hammersmith, mm -hmm. and the place where we met. I, yes, the place where we met, and then where I think it was. So they told us it was going to be like a thirty-minute presentation, fan event, and. We got there and then, you know, started hearing whispers. The cast are coming around. They're doing the tour around. You know, they're doing their world tour. So the cast are going to pop in. Yeah. So we got to, they they put on, you know what? It's probably one of the best events I've been to in a very long time. Very yeah. long time. I think my last event I went to that I really was indulged in was like when Linkin Park played in the O2. I think it was 2011 or something wow. like that. Yeah. And, you know, it was an insane experience. This gave me that sort of vibe. And I haven't even put up most of the footage because there's just far too much to, yeah. like, you can't, like, to, to take on. They, they had, like, a Battle of the Bands where they did the soundtrack from the film. You had two, you had a Deadpool band, you had a Wolverine band, they did yeah. a live event, uh, yeah. DJ, and then presentation from the cast director, uh, the producers, and, you know, you had all the cosplayers there and it was just, yeah, it was an insane moment. But that 35 minutes yeah, was probably, and to share it with my brother, because as he lives in Dubai, for him to come to an event with me and then, and fully indulge, he got yeah. a high five from Hugh Jackman himself, which he was like, I'm never washing this hand again. I, I was going to wonder, uh, did he, did he, has, he, has he washed his hand yet? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he has, but it was <laughs> the scream. It, then I did put up a video of it, of the yeah. scream. Like I've never heard like such a scream from him in my life where it was like a proper <laughs> fanboy <laughs> scream moment. Yeah. And he was like, I just high fived you, Jackman. <laughs> and uh but the 35 minute presentation was absolutely amazing. I mean, I knew we were in for a treat, but like from the get-go, yeah. Was just, you know, like, oh my god, I I, I felt kind of bad after leaving because I was like, I want, how can they just leave it where they left it? Yeah. And it's not that. The fan screening didn't even have most of the stuff that what we saw in cinema after. That's what I was gonna that's what I was gonna ask. Like, did you was there um was it was it something different you saw? Was it very similar clips? Similar clips. Same the first 37 minutes of the movie, exactly the same, but they took out segments, like a split second of something or a cameo or something like that. Okay. And I was like, oh wow, they didn't show that to us at the fan event. So they did really well with hiding a lot of the stuff that they did. Oh, good. Yeah, they did the really well. Oh, it was because when I went and watched it again after, I was like, oh, my God, like, I still can enjoy the first 30 minutes again yeah. because of those moments. So <laughs> it was really, yeah, it was good. It was you good. think because of great, this, great the two characteristics, obviously, you've got, uh, you know, Ryan Reynolds, who's like one of the funniest people in, in the movies. He's, he's really charismatic. He seems like a great guy. And then obviously you've got Hugh Jackman, who's like a great entertainer as well as an actor you think because of their personalities it sort of just made that small that segment even better especially like with the battle of the bands thing I yeah yeah definitely definitely i mean when the, the, when the cast and crew come up and they talk about what they've gone through and what they've done to make this movie like it just gives you that extra feel for it yeah ryan and hugh are best friends anyway so mm. their uh, chemistry that. comes that uh, that comes off on the screen uh but like having them talk about it, you know, having Hugh Jackman walk out in that yellow suit the first time in the cast and crew. You mean you could hear a pin drop, he said. Like, everybody went silent. And there was one guy who came up to him crying, saying, 
this is like probably the best day of my life oh. because my son's name's Logan. Yeah, my son's name's Logan, and to be Excellent. shooting on Deadpool and Wolverine, and you coming out in the yellow suit, like yeah. it, he goes, it was just like proper cherished moments, every bit of it, and you you share things from what they went through while filming this and the yeah. hardships, the good, the good parts of it. And I've actually, I've actually got it, two it does always gives that element. They've actually got two friends who named their sons Logan after um, Wolverine. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have got a friend whose middle name is Logan, but his mum is not into superheroes. Oh, okay. He's yeah. like 43. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I almost <laughs> named my daughter about Logan, it every so. time. <laughs> Why so, didn't allow it? <laughs> I, saw, I saw I saw G Man, you know, and you obviously got you managed yes. to grab some grab some merch. Oof, always always lovely when when the the guys at Disney and Marvel persuade us with gear. Love it. Well, yeah, they gave us like a what was it? It was like a you got the the chains, the the Deadpool and oh, the ones that link the heart chain. The locket yeah, ones. that that kind of lit locket ones, and then uh, hot sauce. Okay. They gave us some hot sauce. Yeah, I'm actually I'm actually halfway through the episode that they had on hot ones. Yeah, oh, that's a good episode. Yeah. We finished that last night. That was a good episode. Yeah. So they gave us that, and then just a couple of bits and pieces from hats. They gave us hats. Yeah. Which I'm, I, I love hats, so it's a part of my collection. So, yeah, uh, yeah they gave us some goodie bags. Uh, bless them. They they put in a lot of hard work. You know what? I think the the first thing I did when I got back was email the person who invited us and say, "Thank you so much for the hard work that you put in," because that's probably one of the best events I've been to in yeah. a good couple of years. And the best feeling in the world to not know about if the cast were going to come. It wasn't that. We were already excited to go watch the movie. The fact mm -hmm. that we got the bonus of having the cast come through uh, was an extra bonus. And yeah. Debs, did you it, manage yeah. to get any merch at all? Because like when I went to the cinema, I saw a couple of people with the, like, the Deadpool um, popcorn heads, but I couldn't see them anywhere. Yeah. That's no, I went to, to the BH2, so Odeon. Yeah. Cool. Nothing. I think you could you could stand in the little like um, pop heads. Okay. Oh yeah, the Funko box. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was it. I saw. I mean, to be fair, I didn't buy food there. Like I always bring my own snacks. Cause it's so <laughs> yeah. So Stay they awful. might have had stuff like. On the I, I, might, I might. I might actually get this. If you can see it, but yeah, it's like, yeah, you know, I might get that. But you know, I was looking for. I was looking for those proper like ones that they throw in America, like the Wolverine like helmet like sort of uh yeah. we, we, we get bumped here yeah. i say <laughs> we get bumped here man <laughs> they did have a couple of uh slot machines in a couple of cinemas but it's like we, we don't get half of the merchandise that they get over there in the yeah. states yeah. like i'd have to order it online just to, to to have something like that in my collection but yeah i'm, I'm wondering um, you know uh, those popcorn buckets are probably going for like a couple hundred dollars right now yeah no nah, um, i'll get yeah. metal ones they did like ages yeah. i love those they're yeah really they were really good yeah really good really good but, <laughs> but as you guys know cinema is in a difficult place at the moment now i mean i found out recently i think it's like a couple of cine worlds are going to be closing in the local london area uh oh their, pr their prices are way too high for us yeah. to, to, to continue oh, i mean i take i take alara out and mm. you know i think what was it just pick up me for and i've already spent 40 quid and i'm like oh my god that's just the tickets and a the couple of popcorn yeah, like yeah, a bit of popcorn and <laughs> And yeah. a drink. This is a kid here, man. Yeah. Like, it's in there like a value meal or something here. Yeah. Please hook me up. <laughs> so it is quite expensive. So you know, everybody and the, the ongoing conversation is we're going to see it on streaming in a month or two anyway. Yeah, I mean, so four guy. Right. Like I think I remember when four guy came out. Within two weeks, it was already out for VOD. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I'm going to watch it on streaming. Yeah, I tell you the truth. With me, I love the cinema. Uh, if yeah. cinema ever disappears, I, I I think I'll be deeply disappointed because you do so much at home nowadays anyway. For me, obviously, the era that we were in, we were in, the cinema was a treat. Mm. And for that yeah. treat to go away, I think it, it, you know, it would hurt me a, a lot to not have that, Same. that space Same. to go it to. It would, it would. And to experience that... a blockbuster. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's, it, it, that's the thing. Like, I, I love being, like, I go to cinema by myself to, just I to do enjoy all the time. a movie. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's like one of my things where it's like, get away from this world for like two and a half hours to go into <laughs> another world as long as it's not if it's not real world stuff if it's yeah. like fantasy and science fiction take me away for a bit you know comedy i'm happy to do that but cinema is getting a bit too expensive where people you know are struggling yeah. and, and we'll decide to just do it at home because we're already paying all the subscriptions. 120 quid for you know maybe up to 200 quid of subscriptions yeah true every year people yeah. are yeah. paying more than that i think because disney Recently, yeah. hiked their prices to one hundred and twenty pound or something yeah. like that. Oh yeah, I paid that. And, I can, direct yeah, debit. Netflix <laughs> are going to start live streaming, so that'll Ooh. go up. 
again. Wow. Yeah. So that's, oh, yes, they are. Because what, you've got the boxing coming up soon, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be, oh, my God, that's, yeah, that's insane. Like, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, save your money, guys. Save your money. Yeah. Save your money. <laughs> <laughs> well, Odeon Limitless is pretty good. Yeah. Ooh. Very That's good. That's what I've I got to do. say. I yeah. only have to go once a month, and I've already saved myself like three quid on like a it's premier ticket. So for exactly. me, that's absolutely the way to go. But I totally get it. If people don't have that sort of money to give every month, because hmm. that's just for me, yeah. they would be doing that for themselves and their kids. And yeah. God, you're like talking a hundred quid if yeah. you actually mm -hmm. if you do buy snacks and stuff, which the kids obviously want to do, don't they? No, and of course. Yeah, so when I went the other night, obviously I went. Obviously, I saw a new kid went in before me because he you went to the IMAX, didn't you? So they must have yeah, a, so, a bit of an earlier yeah. showing. Yeah, they did a. What they do is, uh, yeah, it was the same day it came out. They did twelve o'clock shows. So I yeah, did. I saw a twelve o'clock show. Yeah, so I did. I did both of them. So I did the I did the multimedia screening, which was like at eight o'clock. Yeah. That started. I think eight or seven o'clock it started, and that was in Leicester Square. And then when I got back home, I went at twelve to watch it again. <laughs> so I had a whole night I watched it twice yeah. because I was like, "There's things I'm gonna miss because there were moments in this movie where it was like a football match or a you know, yeah, everybody was screaming when when a goal was scored or something came up, and it's yeah. like I loved that reaction. And when I went to the twelve o'clock screening. The same thing. I think people would be like, it wasn't going to be a packed screening. I didn't think it was going to be packed. Odeon packed. was packed. Yeah, it was packed. The Odeon Lux was packed. Yeah. I walked up the stairs because I was because I was staying in London, so I went to the Angel, mm. and as I was walking up, I thought, okay, cool. I can see a couple of people moving around up there. No problem. So I thought I'd go upstairs. I'm because it was a twelve o'clock show. I'd already like sort of. I was like, oh my god, I'm hungry again. So I thought, all right, I'm gonna get a hot dog and uh, and a drink. <laughs> so I walk up the stairs, and all of a sudden, I walk into the foyer. And it is packed from till to the back of the foyer. And I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> it's hype, man. It's good. It's good. It's bringing it's that hype back. See. It's great, great to see. It's great to see. Great is well. that... I was in June. What else yeah. has been like? Uh, and then you well, I appreciate last year where we had Barbie and Oppenheimer and stuff. But normally it would be every month. I'd be super excited about a film, right? Yeah. But the mm -hmm. last, I mean, ever since COVID, really, I guess. There's just nothing where the whole world is excited. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's what right. it felt like. Exactly. It felt yeah. like that with this. With Definitely this. that. Definitely with that. Definitely. And also Bad Boys 4, the cinema was packed then as well. But it wasn't, yeah. like, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, I didn't go for a 12 o'clock showing. So I don't know yeah. what it was like for everyone to go there. like 18 showings of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Like the cinema had four screens showing and the place was packed. Brent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was. It was good. It was good. It's good to see people come together. It's good to see people's reactions. Like, I love coming out of the cinema and listening to what people say. Mm. I think when we came out of the multimedia screening, there were some, because it's more like press and journalists there, like, some of them didn't not, like, they said it was a good film, but they were like, it was all, it's for the nerds. Yeah. It's for the nerds. Like, there were some parts <laughs> I didn't understand. And I was like, oh, I am one of them nerds. How yeah, can yeah. you say that? Uh, this is <laughs> this is catered for the, you know, yeah. the 18 and 50 year old guys. Yeah, That's yeah. me. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's interesting to hear other people, but it was just a vibe. Like, and yeah. exactly that what, what was with Bad Boys 4 yeah. was it was the vibe that it brought with it like that 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 bringing people together and everybody enjoying something in that exact same moment like, i like I remember... it when people laugh so i love yeah. i'm very out loud at the cinema i can't help it right it's so i'll chuckle and some people <laughs> don't and i'm yeah. like oh yeah. but i love it when there's other people around me that are like <laughs> yeah like, then you feel especially like you also, can get a little bit more into it especially when it's exactly. like little, little little tiny jokes that you know that you get you laugh away and then you hear like a few odd other people like laughing because they like they're they're in this they're in this yeah life. yeah they know and there was, they a few know. Moments, they, there was a few moments in deadpool where he made some comments and it's like if, if you're not a fan fan of the of, of the of the law like you might not have got it it might have gone over your head but if you are mm. in it you're like that's that's genius <laughs> all right so let's jump into some of the movie um yeah some of the best bits but you know i'll say like the opening scene. Yeah, let's like... start at the beginning because <laughs> come on. <laughs> if you weren't like I know. You gotta got be, you got be in it. You gotta be in it. Or even even singing a little bit out loud. Yeah. The soundtrack was brilliant. Yeah. So good. 
<laughs> so good, so good. Like, like have you ever had a? They, you ever, I haven't feel, don't feel we've had a feel good soundtrack like that since probably Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, no, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think I think that's what Sean Levy was going for. It was mm. like let's let's give these guys something that it will give fans of the music an appreciation for this movie as well because yeah. even when they drop like when they drop Iris is my wedding song. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So when they drop Iris, I was like, oh, oh. like how, how are you pulling my heartstrings like that to give me that? <laughs> and then they dropped Avril Lavigne. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Like these are tracks that I adored yeah. during that time period of music. And they've given me the same feels again. And with NSYNC, like that opening yeah. scene. <laughs> oh my God. Blood and so guts. Good. It's so weird because it, you're kind of like, this is Disney. Let's give you as much as violence as we can in the first three minutes. Yeah. And then drop this banger of a track on there as well. That's it. I think that's what I almost love the most about certainly Deadpool is that he just takes the piss out of them. Yeah. He's, like, he's like the only one that's allowed to do it. Um, and I like that they allow it, like they let it happen, they embrace yeah. it and just like... Yeah, just... Considering, let's go to the opening scene. Considering how I felt where that scene finished off back in 2017 in Logan... Where I, I know, I openly admitted a few times that you know I shed a tear in in at that movie. Oh God, yeah, and it was it, like, And I remember co- telling you after I got out of it, like it was just like it, it, it got me big time. Mm-hmm. Not just because it's nothing to do. I don't think it's anything to do with Hugh Jackman. I think it was just it was it was the fact that this film covered such a large story within the um, Marvel universe, and it was portrayed so well. The fact that you know he still helped. You know these kids. He he helped the next generation, hopefully move on, get get past where he was, mm-hmm. and he sort of you know yeah. rested rested I... easy. It was like an old school western. Where, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. He didn't want to He's... believe that he could die, right? Yeah. Because he obviously very regenerative, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think part of me was like, no, it won't happen. It won't happen. He, no, he can't. Possibly can't. Possibly can't. And then when you knew it was actually happening in the moment, you were like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and like you know having kids or whatever you know it's just even like wh- whatever it is you know you leaving someone behind so obviously him leaving Laura behind he's given all he could and like I'm finished here just you know here's the ball just please go live the best life you can and you know, it's like that that moment was like oh no <laughs> <What happens? laughs> you know am I gonna, knew to am I gonna have an epic last moment like that <laughs> Uh, Hopefully not impaled on a tree, mate. But you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, that is an absolute epic moment. I don't think, and there's any other moment that can kind of top that for yeah. a character that's been beloved that long, and Hugh playing that role as well. Because I still stand by what I said when I first saw him as Wolverine. I still don't see him as Wolverine, but right. he's earned my respect in playing that character. Oh, and you, interesting. Towards Days of Future Past. Mm-hmm. And then Logan, I was like, okay, you know what? He looks like Wolverine. Yeah. He plays Wolverine. He's got Wolverine's face. Yeah. I know why they got him. Just yeah. I was upset he wasn't five foot three. Yeah. <laughs> Which we did get. And I was like, we proper geek out moment. We did Spoilers, get Spoilers, guys. We did Fantastic. get. We got it. I love that scene. That was Such hilarious. A... I love that scene. So <laughs> good. When he jumped off the stool and his... Oh my god, it was hilarious. <laughs> the way Deadpool sort of le- leaned down towards him like are you okay with the guy? Did you stick the landing? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. That's a great scene. Great homage to, you know, the four original oh. comic fans that wanted the short Wolverine. We got it. Yeah. And, you know, it was like a great moment of us getting, I mean, Back to the Future is my favourite film of all time. So to get yeah. that soundtrack to go with that montage. Yeah. And then I feel like Hugh Jackman got his redemption in, in playing that character in different costumes and different settings. Yeah. You know, you got to appease, uh, got to appease all the fans who always yeah, had, had exactly. their little quips about, you know, he should be wearing this, he should do this. You That's know, right, yeah. He should wear the mask, he should, like, you not wear the mask, he should, you know, be seen in the white vest, he should, he should, he should be patch or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And so, like, yeah, definitely. I also have an armless Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, is it my armless? My partners before he, he unfortunately left us, so yeah. I can't get rid of it, even though he doesn't have I'm anything. wondering if he took the arms off, and then what you do is that thing, you know, when you put your hands behind your back and then have those like, little, he had those little Wolverine arms that like, stick out. <laughs> I just, which is why I love that. This is my favorite uniform yeah. outfit. I love yeah. 
blue and yellow. That's the, that's one I had as a kid. I had that one where you know you and you press his, you press the inside of his hands and then the claws will pop forward. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I had, I'm trying to remember. I've got a whole bunch of them. I still got them in the loft, probably. But I've got one that turned into actually a wolf. Okay. Oh. The head yeah. flipped. And yeah, the head flipped and the body flipped, and then you take it apart. And I was like, I don't know who got me that, but I still kept it. I was like, such yeah. an interesting nice. toy. But uh, yeah, yeah, they they always bring joy, don't they? So I'm quickly go back to that first opening scene. <clears throat> I, I know it's, don't, yeah. don't be boring, guys. But like, <laughs> where obviously he's gone to that that sad scene. And he's managed to make it interesting. He's managed to make you feel like he's, he hasn't just dug up Wolverine and like he's, he's so miraculous, miraculous back alive. He's made it into a fun, like, okay, interesting... Okay, then, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Fight scene and then uses Brilliant. His, spoiler alert, uses his skeleton to beat the crap out of TV agents. <laughs> Such a fantastic scene, honestly. And then with his dancing in between, like, <laughs> yes. oh god, he smashed it! Absolutely great scene. Oh, Absolutely great. Did you great see that? In, did you see that in the uh, thirty-seven uh, minute thing? Was that in there? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, that was there. Yeah, that was there. That, okay. so that was I'd be like, sold, sold. sold. <laughs> Wait, silly more. I was like, oh my god, they they did the fully most violent opening for Disney ever. Yeah. So that's like it's brilliant. He's breaking rec like records already now. He's mm. breaking boundaries so that we can get more R-rated movies like this. You know, now you're talking about having Blade to be better. Yeah. More violent, more dark. I, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do with Blade. I've seen so many like um director walking out, producer walking out, all these sort of things. I don't see why it's such an issue to put this character get together. Just grab one of the comic books. Grab one of the stories. And um, would it still from... be Wesley or not? No, no, no. Okay. No, they won't do that. They, they, they're fully going ahead with Mahersha Ali if he can, you know, if they can good. find the right story. But they'll uh... find it. They'll find it. They're always going to have. It's a difficult one because I feel like Blade. Is... Oh, sorry, Deadpool, Deadpool Wolverine is going to be. That's their first R-rated movie. Yeah. And we've never had him before, right? You've had Blade, and Wesley was great, and yeah. everybody loved it, and it was really good. So I think it's almost trickier. Yeah, definitely on how they can fit this into the MCU, mm. because yeah. we did hear his voice at the end of Eternals. Yes, we did. We heard Mahesh, so, yeah, Mahesh, Mahesh Ali. Yeah, we heard him. <clears throat> so it's like you've given us that. They will come out with it. You know, it's mm -hmm. going to be a long haul. Uh, Deadpool Wolverine is the opening for it because they're yeah. going to say, okay, we can make it R-rated. We can make it more bloody. Let's go for it. Yeah, but yeah. So going back to this, some of the cameos. Mm. Really, oh, actually oh. made me. And I, make... I'd watched no trailers, right? I hadn't yeah. watched any oh, trailers. I just knew it was coming out, and so everything was like, oh my god! Oh, yeah. God. Like we were logistically make, making go. noises in the cinema, and like, like I said, I was there by myself. But luckily, I was you know sandwiching you know those oh. also geeks next to me, so it wasn't like I didn't feel that bad because I was like you know. We're all geeking out together. Yeah. I was genuinely making noises. I was like, "Oh my god!" I was like, "Oh!" I was like, <laughs> "You know the scenes when you know they're all walking in." Well, obviously the um, the first one was obviously Johnny Storm. One was just like, caught me, caught me, <laughs> "Oh, brilliant!" Up, a little bit there. So good, so good. Because everybody thought it. Everybody yeah. thought, "Oh, it's Cap," because he had the red and yeah, yeah, kind of red and blue blue shirt on underneath. You're like, oh wow, that could be Cap because I'm hearing the voice and I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, he's from Brooklyn. That's that's Cap. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was brilliant. That was so good. Happy Hogan. <laughs> Happy Hogan. To open it was, up. That was good. that was really good as well. That was good. Yeah. Uh, um, also, there was, uh, Happy Hogan. That was that was good. There was obviously, uh, was it? Well, obviously, yeah, Human Torch, Cassandra Nova, Blade. You had, um, Electra. Electra. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Toad. Oh my god, Channing Tatum as Gambit was the oh, best god. thing that, ever. That like, as much as I would like hype for Wesley Snipes being back because that yeah. was such a badass scene. Yeah, uh, and that made the, the whole cinema scream. We screamed yeah. like I think yeah. the, the the woman next to me. I apologized after because <laughs> I jumped out of my seat. Yeah. And, like, and she was like, she got scared, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm so. And she was a journalist, and I was like apologizing, and then we did yeah. get into a conversation after outside because she didn't get a lot of things, but yeah. Played really script, but Channing Tatum as oh, Remy Levy. Oh my god, those <laughs> those exchanges were hilarious. The best, 
the best. The part where he's like the cards and stuff though, yeah. like it actually made it make you want to see him in something. Yeah, yeah. definitely. He got his redemption, honestly. Uh, and they the gave him the full. Just... Oh, Accurate. everything head to toe. Yeah. yeah, some of the bits where he's speaking Cajun were so funny, and the way Deadpool's like, "What did he say?" <laughs> did you tell me he's from there? Huh? Did you tell me that he's like from there? That's well, why he, he's I think it's, it. I think he, I think he was he's raised near Louisiana. Yeah. So he um apparently that's why he really wanted the role. Apparently he's loved Gambit since he was a kid. So mm. and he that's why he's been pushing to make that get when well, he wanted to get his own solo. But the reason because he he is from like Louisiana, the deep or those deep states, he can really pull off that Cajun accent, and he knows how they speak down there. I didn't understand what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> And he just, <laughs> he just, he looked like the animation. He looked like the animation. He yeah. spoke like the animation. Yeah. His lingo. But there was some random stuff in there where I was like, they would let, they are pushing it. Yeah. When he was talking about being in daddy's balls and the rest of it. And I was like, what the hell? Like, are they going this route? Uh, <laughs> the, the, the context was so much, but it, it worked so well. It yeah. worked yeah. so well. And I, I think have... 23 being, I mean, oh. she looked, gorgeous yeah but it was she was kind of the kicker to show you how long it had been right because yes actually that's all right the, yes all, the, all still look really good and look quite similar to when they were younger but she's had that bigger from a dinky little girl to yeah. kind of woman sort of face so that's right that's yeah. right and she's still so good the way she took out the juggernaut <laughs> i was like damn could that actually be done you tell me that people were wasting this much time in the comics and they could have done that <laughs> <laughs> all this time oh the comics kept it clean the comics kept it clean that's the thing like now with the movie world like they can chop heads and the rest of it so yeah. like you know that scene with saber tooth yeah. like it was done so quick such a good battle scene that so was. quick done bye see you later yeah. <laughs> and even the way they really got wolverine to move more like an animal in this one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, they wouldn't really get that before as much. Mm. Like the way he ran off, the charging, the yeah. yeah, he gave us some really good. We got the I got the Wolverine I've always wanted now. Yeah. So I'm quite happy about that. I'm, I'm chilled for him to leave it and move it to somebody else. All right, this is jumping in my about head. Juggernaut. Yeah. And so then I was thinking of the helmet, and then obviously yeah. I was thinking about who they were grabbing it for to put it on, and then all I could think about. So fucking hands underneath yeah. people's skin and yeah. in their orifices. <laughs> and I was like, oh, 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 yeah. my God. Just horrible, the, horrible. The, the hands with the eyeballs and stuff. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was that was insane. But really good. Yeah. Really good. So good. Cassandra Nova is very cool in the comic yeah. book. So, so to, picture this. To, to this get is, that this, element. This just jumped into my head. Picture this. All right. Say they didn't have Hugh Jackman back again. Okay. Daniel Radcliffe. No. As, as Wolverine. No. All right. And... Alan Rickson as Sabretooth. How dare you? Imagine... Know, I, I, Alan, Alan, yeah, Alan Richardson, yeah, definitely. I can see that as Sabretooth. I can't see Daniel Radcliffe, dude. Oh, Daniel Radcliffe. Dude, he's like a weird little baby boy. Uh, that... Some of his most recent films where he's like, even like um right. the one, the magic one, like he he, he looks quite gruff now. I think, I you know... Hate my favourite character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just. This is a great throw, actor, no great, great me. actor. But I'll just throw it out. I don't think... I just imagine like a small Wolverine, <laughs> huge Alan Richardson as Sabretooth. That would be oh, that, that'd be quite good. But yeah, no, I can't see yeah uh, Daniel as the character. What's but Sabretooth? we did see much bigger yeah. than Wolverine. In oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, <laughs> much bigger, much bigger. And they I still haven't got to that. Uh, but we did get another Wolverine, which I kind of was hoping we would get. Oh, yeah, the cavalry. <laughs> oh, the cavalry. <laughs> that was awesome. Like yeah. that. I couldn't be more happier to see that guy get some shine. Yeah. And, and in a role which I think he could play. He looked the part. He's got the, the built on him. He's yeah, not but... as tall as Hugh Jackman. So yeah. I can see it. But yeah, that was a good scene. Definitely yeah. a good scene. I'm trying to think, like. Obviously, if he, I don't know if he would get that role. I think they would obviously set him up for an, a different role. No, I think a different. I'm role trying definitely. to figure out what you know where he would where he would fit within the <laughs> within the, you know maybe a cyclops potentially. I can see him as a cyclops. I said that, or I see him as a Mister Sinister. Yes, that's a good one. I can see him as a Mister Sinister. He's quite wooden, I think, with his acting. Yeah, like I. 
I don't have anything against him, but if we're talking like acting, acting, then I think, yeah, something like that would probably suit him. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe like a Joel Kinnaman as like Cyclops. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, and maybe if they went down and did a proper Phoenix saga, like because Joel Kinnaman <clears throat> is pretty much a real badass. Can we talk about how much we loved the car fight scene? Oh, my, that's I think that's my favorite scene. <laughs> I think that is one of my, my I think that might be my favorite scene apart from obviously some cameos. That was a good so cool beautiful match. shot though. Yeah. So good. So good. So good. Absolutely good. I, I feel like the action in this, they really push yeah. the limits from what we would usually get. I mean, yeah. the stabbing, the, the stabbing alone, I'm like, yeah. oh my God, they're really doing this? <laughs> it was like the best, it's like one oh, of the Oh, maybe knife. Yeah. Maybe knife. Knife. <laughs> Kept, kept creeping up. Uh, yeah. Quite an emotional scene before that fight kicked off. Yeah. You know, I feel like we got, because we've got, this is a whole different Wolverine we're getting here. Yeah. I really, you know, Wolverine's always carrying pain with him. He's always got yeah. issues. Yeah. But this time, you know, we're getting the full front of what happened and what how he's, how he's dealing with it. And mm. that moment where he shut Deadpool up, I was like, yeah. oh my God, we're going to fight now. Yeah. I loved it. It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, it's just like where I'm wondering where it's gonna fit. This is this is the only thing I'm looking at. Obviously, you know, you've got the TVA, you've got Marvel as it is at the current state. I still feel like Deadpool Wolverine is still is gonna sit in its own little pocket for a little while. Um, I'm alright with that. It will. I'm alright with that. Yeah, and I think that's what the Deadpool movies were. That it gave me. It's given us probably one of the best trilogies. Yeah, since Back to the Future, mm -hmm. that's me saying that, and Star Wars, yeah. that it could be its own separate pot of movies. Yeah, doesn't and work even very link well. It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I don't care how it links later on, and everybody keeps saying this is the MCU saver. It's not because yeah, it's, 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 it. it's it does feel it like is what it is. It that like comedy it. doesn't work in many other no. character ways. Like no. it just doesn't because that comedy in that is perfectly well done where if you look at the comedy in say like a Thor movie where it's just joke 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 be silly joke 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 it's just it it's almost forced yeah it's almost yeah, like yeah yeah it is the it first is. time I watched the Thor one I enjoyed it mm. but it loses it on the second run because yeah. you're like oh it was really easy it was really simple it was super cheesy but I would watch Deadpool I've already said to my friends anybody else that wants to go and watch it tell me I'm coming with you yeah and I would still laugh again and again and again because it's so good and so well placed yeah so yeah I think, I think like, my, my favorite Thor movie obviously I love the I, I really like the first one you know when he's like smashed a beer and like I need another or get me a horse when he walks, to the, walks into like the pet shop but like my favorite Thor movie, I've always been, people will say you're I'm, I'm, you're you're crazy. Was Dark World? Oh, interesting. Okay. That to me was Ooh. the best version. He was more. It was a little bit more serious. There was a few like comedy bits in there, but it was a Thor that was looking to the future to actually become like King Rune Thor or something like that. Yeah, uh, that's a hard one. I, I I didn't really enjoy any of the fours, but for Ragnarok was my one of if if I'm oh. gonna pick a favorite, yeah, Ragnarok was my had, favorite had, 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 because you know, it had, had a good balance. Good yeah, it had a good balance. I think what's happening now, like Sean Levy, who directed Deadpool Wolverine, he was heavily inspired by like uh, uh, Nick Nolte and Eddie Murphy's Forty Eight Hours, oh, yeah. planes, <laughs> trains, and automobiles. Yeah, uh, or you know, Lethal Weapon. So he's thinking, put these two characters together, but you know. Make it work. And yeah. because yeah. they're friends, their chemistry works really well. But give us a, a, a journey because really and truly, the story doesn't fit into any of the MCU madness no. anyway because no. yeah. the TVA was a separate entity yeah. until it changed at the end. Oh, sorry. Uh, what's her name? Hunter came from the TVA from the, that we know Yeah, yeah. To, to come over to try to stop it. But really and truly, it wasn't nothing that was going to be leading to anywhere else. Um, yeah. I'm I'm happy with the way it was an adventure with Wolverine and Dead. That's what I was happy. With. Yeah, yeah that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dream, it's a dream movie. It's a yeah. dream come true for for us for us fans. Um, you know, you gotta give Ryan all the props in the world for like banking on himself and in that first one where he actually you know went dug into his own pockets to make sure the movie was made. Right yeah, exactly. You know, good on him. Good on him. There's uh, mm. 
there's a lot of passion behind it when you he saw that character in himself from when oh, he did yeah. Wolverine Origins. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, he was like, oh my god, like you know, that's the reason why he got into this. So that yeah, we we've got a comic book accurate on the screen representation yeah. of these characters, but done really well in a way where most of the Marvel movies that have come out recently, and you know, I haven't put them back on. I no. I could watch it again. I've got Disney Plus. I could watch them again, but I end up putting on something else on from the eighties or nineties because yeah. rewatchability. Yeah. Yeah. So you haven't seen all of them. How? What? Which ones have you missed? Um. What was the last one with um? Marvels? With the ladies. The Marvels. Oh, Marvels. Yeah. Uh oh. What's the? Oh. Yeah, the Marvels. Because even like the Marvels, the Marvels. En- ending the scene. Cool. Yeah, the Marvels ending scene, which was the best part of the movie. Um... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Obviously, Monica Rambo has gone through the time space continuum pretty much and has ended up in. I'm wondering which universe she's in because she's obviously in one of the Fox universes at this point. Is she I don't currently think it's the Fox universe? Yeah. So is she currently in one Deadpool and Wolverine are in currently? Or is she in, in a. They, didn't, they didn't really They didn't really give us a, a timeline on that because even with this Deadpool movie. Yeah. I think what people are slightly getting confused on is that <clears throat> it starts off with 616 Universe, yeah. which is Deadpool in our MCU. Yeah, current MCU, yeah. And then goes into 1005, which is yeah, a yeah. different Deadpool. Yeah. But it's the story that we're getting right now. It's not even the story of the Deadpool. Sorry, it's the story of the Deadpool from the Fox Universe. Yes. So the Deadpool at the beginning, where he's trying to get into the Avengers, is a whole different Deadpool. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Madame Web. Ma- oh, <laughs> Madame Web. That's not part. Oh, that's not part of the MCU. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's Fox, but you haven't, you haven't missed anything, Gabs. Yeah. yeah don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Exactly. That's so. That's the Sony verse. That's the Sony verse. <laughs> the Sony verse. <laughs> Do not waste two hours of it. Actually, yeah. just to experience it. Yeah. <laughs> because don't put Madame Web and like Marvel to it. Yeah. I and and I think a lot of people have said it. If you just gave it to me with a different title of a movie, yeah. I think I'd enjoy it. Yeah. But because oh, you get the okay. hype of the Spider-Man universe into yeah. it, and that yeah. it has no connection and it's messy and the acting's horrible. <laughs> like, and why just... would you put this in that universe? Like, yeah. Why are you messing with the IP so bad? Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, definitely yeah. want to watch. Watch it, watch it, watch it. You have to watch it. You have to experience it. You have to experience it. It's like when you when you watched um Morbius and stuff like that. It's like, oh, <laughs> Get- you got to experience it. You got to experience it. <laughs> yeah, I, so, I'm uh, gonna stand by Morbius. Though. I still enjoyed it. Yeah, there's certain parts. I think they did cut a lot out of the movie. <laughs> they did. They did. They did. There no, needs to be a director's cut. Yeah, even though, yeah, they do. Even like the opening scene, there should have been so much more to the opening of that movie. And they just like definitely. one minute he's just walked in here with his crutches, next minute he's a badass vampire. It's like you, you missed vital. <laughs> Bits for, for, the, for the audience to like suck them in and make yeah. you care about this character. Oh, it happens, definitely happens, you know. So, yeah, for me, see, Deadpool was uh, I got to see it again, yeah, it, same. It was everything I hoped for, and I'll tell you a little bit more, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, that last scene of them battling on, on, on the high street, <laughs> and we get to see <laughs> the, the, with the with like, like, how was it, 100 Deadpools, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Deadpool court. <laughs> oh my god, and, it was insane! Oh and we yeah, get the Deadpool mask. Paul was like the savior in the end. Yeah, n- n- nice, nice. Paul was, you know, hilarious. Highlander. Then, oh yeah, he got it. Dog. Sorry, yeah. Highlander. Deadpool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dog. Dog. Paul. Dog. Paul. Yeah. yeah. No, it was a great, great moment. I mean, the mask. And yeah. how old is Hugh Jackman? Fifty-six. Yeah, probably around that. Yeah, and he's still Bro. insane. When that that scene happened and the shirt came off, yeah. the shirt exploded. Yeah, yeah. I was like, like, how has this guy got himself I in know. that sort of shape Incredible. at that age? Yeah. Like, where well, I'm struggling. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm struggling, but he looks like, what's going on? Like, he absolutely looked awesome. Like, yeah. I give him, I give the guy props. Like, and then yeah. it was a good scene, and it, you know, it's stuff that I draw. Like, when I draw the cow, you draw the character. Yeah, and you and you see it on the big screen, and you're like, "Oh my god, wow!" He put himself in that picture; like, yeah. he looked awesome when they came out. And again, they used my favorite soundtrack. 
Oh, how do you, how do you use the Google Dolls and yeah and 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 what and and it works so well with the scene, but <laughs> I think they did good with the music on that. Yeah. But I love it. Very very good. Is yeah. there paradox? What, what did you guys it, think of paradox? He was a cool character. Like it was um it was good it was nice to see that everyone obviously even when you watch the Loki series not everyone in TVA wanted any change. Mm. Yeah. And it's like you see police officers you see different people some people like their job some people <laughs> some people are bred to just be a little <laughs> bit more tapped in the head than others. Yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. No exactly that. No, he was good character good character. Uh Is there um... any cameos you would have any other cameos you would have liked to have seen in the movie? Oh, obviously we saw a bunch of them from the from the former former Fox. Obviously you even had like Toad, you had Psylocke, you had a few. Obviously mm -hmm. some played by other people. Mm. Yeah, 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 we did. Vinnie, we did. We did. Vinnie Jones didn't come back um, as no, a juggernaut, but yeah, I would have liked. Similar. They mentioned the Punisher several times. I think. Yeah. I would have loved to seen the Punisher, and they talk about Punisher eighty five, which is yeah. Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. So that would have been interesting to see that. Yeah, when when they pull out the when he pulls out, uh, Blade pulls out the yeah, rocket, rocket launcher. launcher. They were like, "Oh, where did you get that from?" And they, and I think what's her name, Electra says, "Oh, but that's Punish Punisher eighty five. Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh my god, they 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 reference so much." And yeah. for me, like to notice that, I was like, "Oh my god, that's brilliant." But yeah, I, I mean, Blade had the best lines in the movie. You know, yeah. he he he's the one and only Blade. <laughs> Ain't yeah. nobody replacing him. Some people still trying to ice skate uphill. You know. Oh my god, that is one of my favorite <laughs> lines in the yeah. world. I will say that to everybody. Uh, that's that's that, that. My wife's like, why do you keep saying that? To her? And I was like, that's like the best line that oh came out of like, the early, the, the late nineties. Like that's yeah. like that's the word. Like you, when when you're winning, that's the one I use. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I use. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing I would have liked to have seen. Obviously, Debs knows how I feel about this guy playing one of my favorite characters, but <laughs> it's obviously where you had Pyro. When he obviously Johnny Storm was there, and obviously he just took the flame out of him, just um, you know, used up his, used up his powers. I'd like to see mm. a bit more pyro, but someone brings in all of a sudden you see a motorbike pull up, and it's Johnny oh. Blaze, oh. and then, then it would be like he sees the fire and he tries to take it from Johnny Blaze, and Johnny Blaze is like, okay, and yeah. just launches the fire fire on him, and that, that, that takes him out, and then just rides off. <laughs> just rides off. <laughs> you like flames? They could, you know what? They could have done so much. Uh, I suppose story budget. Yeah. How do you keep people engaged? <clears throat> and it must have been difficult for them to pick those four characters that they did. I mean, yeah. to bring back Laura, to bring back uh, Channing Tatum, and all these. Sorry, yeah. Blade and Electra. It's like yeah, yeah. There's a specific reason why they must have picked. There must have been more. Yeah. That yeah. they reached out to, but those were the specific. But to not ones. make it overwhelming either, because I think if there was too much, it would almost take away from the fact that they were there. Yeah, and those and those characters were pretty much the, you know big staples of the franchise. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I did I did hear today though that apparently um, Ben Affleck was kept turned up on set to bring his kids to see because he's got kids with um, Jennifer yeah. Garner. Jennifer, yeah, yeah, that's right. Apparently, she says a little line about about his character, doesn't she? She's yeah, like, well. Up. You know, I bet he would just turn up now. Please let me in. Please let me in. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> oh no wonder because that's what the news was. The rumors going around that Ben Affleck was on set. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense now. That yeah, definitely makes sense now. I think, because I, think I got, thought we would have got Daredevil. Yeah, I think they got two kids together, and then uh... yes, that's right. Yeah, but I think they would have only joked if his one had come in, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah, it'd have been funny if like he'd also gone to see Happy Hogan and Ho Happy's to open the door and like Ben just walked straight into the wall or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh happy and Deadpool just pushes him out of the way <laughs> oh that would have been yeah, good but yeah generally good. yeah like I said I, it was it was a joy it was an absolute joy and I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing it again I, I think it will it might even be even better because I sometimes I think you see things the second time that you've missed the first time because you're so engrossed yeah. in trying to get it. Whereas now you'll know some of it. You might spot a few little different things. Yeah. Oh, you'll notice so much more. Yeah, like so I did much. notice one character was um ah, <clears throat> oh, he was in the the red and white shirt. He his name was ah oh. Butch, not the butcher. He's in the pun he's one of the punishers anyway. Yeah, he's in the punishers, it, yeah. Yeah, he's the, the oh, German. This. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's your hold up. Is it the German? Is the name the German? Hold Obviously, up. in in the original um, Punisher movie, it was played by um, Kevin Nash, the uh, former WWE yeah, yeah. superstar. That's right. See, and he's massive. He was like six yeah. or something. 
But also, he was in John Wick, wasn't he? Huh? He was in John Wick. Yes, the first yeah. one. Yeah. Would they uh, ever let the people who have played the characters in the TV series go into the movies? Do you think? Because I love John Berthnall. Punisher. I think Punisher might show up in Secret Wars somewhere. Yeah. Well, he's back, so we we never know. And yeah, now that they're doing they're... Marvel television, yeah, yeah. So it's weird because they're still Daredevil. keeping it quite separate. Yeah, you're gonna get Daredevil born yeah. again soon, so I'm not. I think that's gonna be mid mid next year potentially. And he links to Daredevil, and I like the guy who plays Daredevil as well. Yeah, Charlie Cox. Yeah, so good in Kin. You need to yeah. watch. This. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the character that it, I think. It, I'm pretty sure it was. I'm sure. I feel like it, it was the German, but I've typed yeah, it in. It doesn't come up, but I'm 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 still searching. So yeah, I'll yeah. let you know. <laughs> it's Google Hunt. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, see, so we've had you know we've had a few at the X Men because obviously you've had Colossus, you've got Negasonic, um, Teenage Warhead, and so so forth. Going forward, how do you think we're gonna they're gonna introduce the X Men? into the uh, universe because obviously we've got the fantastic four coming soon have you guys thought about how they might bring the x-men in because we know we've got a few mutants now popping up you know we've got namor floating around you've got a miss marvel who's been shown to have uh, mutant abilities um you know and i, I sometimes I'm, i worry about the multiverse can be too sticky for non for the for the casual because I know a lot of the casuals yeah. haven't seen a lot of the TV shows, and they're not keeping up together, you know, with Moon Knights and the, and uh, you know, what was it, uh, Scarlet Witch, and where what's happening with Vision and all those sort of things, and we've got uh, Agatha, Agatha coming out soon. Oh yeah, that looks good. That looks really good. She was yeah. in the last one of the Scarlet Witch one, wasn't she? The yeah, yeah. So. I feel like something. I feel a little bit now. For, sorry for some just casual fans when they're gonna see, sort, of, sort of see these characters, um, sort of turning up. And I feel sorry for the ones who've been in it like us for the last twenty years. Like <laughs> you know, where 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 are some of our childhood characters are gonna slide their way into the um into the universe? Yeah, because I think the timeline switches and stuff can be quite complicated. If you weren't a big comic reader, yeah, genuine geek that is used to that from Spidey, Batman, etc. Yeah. Like it is quite hard to grasp mm. sometimes. So as long as they do a good job of potentially explaining it quickly, maybe like at the beginning or something. Yeah. It should be all right. But yeah, don't make it too complicated. Because I know that like, I feel like the Fantastic Four is going to be slightly into the multiverse. It kind of has to be because you know they've never been mentioned in the MCU so far. And even the fact that it's going to be based in the 1960s. Like for me, if it's the 1960s, there's, there would have been a few Stark exposed by that point. You know, I'm sure Tony's dad would have said about a brilliant genius out there. Yeah, Reed, Reed Richards. Richards. Have spoken about him, yeah. Can I ask why, why they keep pushing Fantastic Four? Because they, they are... A reason, like, I didn't used to read those, so yeah. I've seen... They're the first family. They're the first family. They're the first, fam they're the first, oh, okay. the first family of the, of of Marvel. You know, they were what the first um, teams created, and um, they are. Reed Richards is a staple of the comics. He's involved in pretty much every major arc that, oh, that branches the, okay. the world, the universe together. He has to be involved because he's the smartest man on earth. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like they've just—it's always been an injustice. Like the first one was all right, but they just got worse. <laughs> I'm like, how is this worse? <laughs> the end. The last fight scene of the last one was absolute gash. I was yeah. so angry. <laughs> <laughs> I can only pray that they do a better job this time. <laughs> yeah, oh, they got—they got the best. The the problem is, and this is what I've always said about comic books and adaptation into the movie world is probably one of the hardest things because some of it may not work for the audience because at the end of the day with movies you have to sell it to everybody yeah yeah. your audience cool. is everybody yeah and comic books only have a certain amount of audience when it comes to fantastic four yeah. x-men yeah. justice league you have sides to pick and yeah. to try and adapt big stories into the big i mean with x-men they've tried the the phoenix saga twice and they failed 
Yeah. And it's like, you can't do that story. Like the animation did it better because we had yeah. six episodes to continue with. Yeah. yeah. Where with a, with a two and a half hour movie, you can't put such an epic story to that. And I give Marvel props and because of the Russo brothers come like Russo brothers working on infinity war and Endgame. They understood the assignment of how do we still homage to the comic books, but make it our own. And I've accepted whatever they do in the movie world as its own. Mm. It's nice that they have a little bit of comic book references in it. Yeah. But I completely see it because when phase one came out, I never enjoyed it. I I never liked the characters. It never matched up to the comic books. And I was like, you have a hundred years of comic books and mythology, yet you guys still don't know how to use that. But yeah. then I've realized over the journey, it's like, how do you adapt such a convoluted story mm. on the big screen for general everyday folk to understand? Because yeah. we got to make a billion here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Marvel can play around a lot more. I feel like they, they have a lot more scope. When it comes to DC, I believe that they should really dip into the comics and dip into just grab some of the animations and make that into live action. For some, reason I, I, for some reason, I hold DC in a lot more higher regard. Mm. I, I don't say that, that, and that's not and that's not taking anything away from Marvel. Darker and serious. Do you think? Yeah, that's... I don't take anything away from Marvel. They're fantastic. They've produced great content for me for many, many years. But I feel like um, with DC, they you know they've got all this great content out there. They've got they put the budget into these animations that they have. Just literally take that off the script, take that off the page, mm-hmm. take that off the off the animation, make it into a live action. You know, okay, I, I, okay. I know that's, that's hard to say for obviously with um, but Marvel, I'm quite happy for them to play around because I've always felt Marvel's more for everyone. It's a little, it's a little bit more childish, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I use this word sometimes whimsical, <laughs> where you can <laughs> play around a little bit. But DC for me, I feel that you know they need to go down the boys' route. They need to be. Yeah. They can do that. And I think they don't want to take risk because of the, the IP and because of Warner Brothers owning them. Yeah. I think that's the, that's the difficult part of what they can do with some of these characters. I think like Watchmen, a lot of people yeah. don't rate that movie. Oh my God. But Watchmen I think fantastic. it's one of the best comic fantastic. book movies yeah. out there. And they changed, I think Zack Snyder changed a lot of the story towards the end, mm. which is fine. I can understand a bit of adaptation to the screen. The big squid maybe not work at the end like it did in the comic book. Uh, so it's interesting way, the way they take it, but it's they've got uh, they've got solid stories. They've got mm-hmm. heart, they, like some of their like some of the Batman comic books alone. Yeah, you know, couldn't compare to some of the because Marvel work in big arcs and big team ups where you've yeah, yeah. got this man with no powers trying just share will to get through the madness he's going through and get out on the other end is 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 I suppose more. Yeah, connecting to us humans. Yeah, obviously now you know DC have got you know got obviously James Gunn's over there now. There's going to be a lot of obviously we've got to wait and see what happens with uh, Superman, and then see how they adapt uh, their universe. Also, we're going to have another season of uh, Peacemaker, which is going to mm-hmm. which I cannot wait for. I love that. I love Peacemaker. Yeah, equally okay. every time he says <laughs> it, I'm like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is true. She loves Eagly so much. <laughs> Eagly, so cute. I love it. So good. So good. He'll he'll he'll, he'll smash it. Look what he bought us: Guardians of the Galaxy. For him yeah. to put that on the table to Marvel and say, "Here are these misfit characters," mm. but I think people will fall in love with them. And he yeah. picked the right characters because oh my God, if you so go back to the good. comic books, if you look at the original Guardians of the Galaxy crew, yeah. they look nothing like what we saw on the big yeah. screen. Oh, but what he did thing. was pick. Elements from Guardians of the Galaxy comic books mm. paid homage to the creators of those and writers of those yeah. and brought these characters together to give us a new Guardians of the oh, Galaxy. Wow. Yeah. I love it. They're, the they're my favorites. They are my absolute yeah. favorites. He did. He, he yeah. made us fall in love with a raccoon and, and a tree. <laughs> yeah. And a little yeah. tiny tree and then a teenage tree and then a bigger tree and all backwards. Oh, tree first. He, he knows he, he, he's, he's a good writer. Mm. So I think Superman is going to be insanely good. Yeah. Uh, but he's good with those characters. Even his Suicide Squad was a, like one of the best movies out of that DCE yeah. EU movie. Oh yeah, the, his, yeah, his version of Suicide Squad was way better than the first one. So good, so good. Yeah. So 
you know, even if you had Starro and all those sort of things, it, it oh, looked... that was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it works. Well, it worked. It was. So it, it was a great but team. Character it, relationships yeah. in that film, yeah. and how so turned on each other, and then there was just so much to it. Yeah, it was so good. Like you genuinely felt for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So we're in good hands with James. I trust him. Yeah, I trust yeah. him. So one uh, other big bit of news that we got, um, and I'd like to get your take on it, both of you guys. Robert Downey Jr. has been brought back and he's going to be Dr. Doom. So I know how I feel about her. <laughs> how do you guys feel? Debs, you want to go first? I don't know <laughs> how I feel about him. <laughs> I love him, right? He is yeah. he's amazing. And I, half of me is really pleased that he's not coming back as Iron Man, because it was done. It's done. It's over. Don't. It'll take away from it. It'll mm. take away from the hurt and the sadness if you bring him back as Iron Man again, ever again, unless yeah. you did it pre what was what's happened. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I know enough about Doctor Doom to know if it's a good casting or not. Yeah. Okay. That's it, that's 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 again, but that's gonna be that's gonna be the opinion of a lot of people. Yeah. You know. What do you guys think with your comic book wisdom? Were you happy? Me, I would say I wasn't. I feel like they've missed an opportunity in regards to other characters that could have been uh Doctor Doom. I feel like they should have gone with a character who's potentially from Eastern Europe. You know, okay. um I for me for ages I thought if they're gonna bring Doom in, I I thought Christopher Christoph Waltz would be that would be good, so good. So good. That would have <laughs> been so good. He's, he's he's so good with accents. He is obviously Eastern European. And I feel like if you look at some of his roles, he can be he has that gravitas about him. So so good. So good. Have they so have they done it because so he's like crazy clever, right? Yeah. And super, super baddie, super villain. Yeah. Super you strong, know, he's like... he's he's the type of villain where you you sympathize with his mindset. Apart from the fact that you know, because everything he does is either for the benefit of his nation mm -hmm. or the fact that he wants to be in control he likes he likes order okay and is it because we're getting the fantastic four that we're getting him i think is that well, gonna, is they, they kind of they're, they're, they're gonna have to kind of meet up somewhere because him and reed richards were college yeah i just read that he college. was disfigured yeah. from a fantastic four accident yeah so mm -hmm. reed richards uh, tampered with them um, uh, with the machine of the machine that he was um using or uh, cre creating and uh, he ended up like blowing up in his face, you know. Obviously, okay. with comics, people become enemies for some of the craziest reasons. But obviously, <laughs> so if someone blew something in my face, I can see why we'd be enemies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just feel um, Robert Downey Jr. Obviously, being an amazing actor that he is, I just feel like people are not going to be able to differentiate between the two. And even if you say he's an alternate version. Uh, for, from the multiverse or whatever, it's still we're still really we are st still stuck in the six one six. Yeah, that's what it had with this. Yeah, I was just reading said Earth six one six is one of the strongest. Then it talked about the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the other, the only other actor I did think could be that played a role was um his name is Mikhail Kuzman, and you might have seen him in um Rebel Moon. Oh uh, yes, that's right. And he's been in Game of Thrones. He's been, been a, a good, he's been, a few, been, he's been good. a few roles, and I think he he's he's quite tall as well. He's got the he's got the bone structure, which will look good under the mask. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna have to make like I was calling Tony. They're gonna have to make. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's the problem. That is the problem right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> they're gonna just, have to I make think that all right. No, <laughs> exactly. Just picture yeah. a castle, and you hear these footsteps coming down it. 
And then all you hear is Christopher Watts's voice from bellowing from the mask, telling someone to do something. <laughs> but because obviously RDJ has a certain cadence in the way he speaks. Yeah, he might have to change it just so we don't keep yeah. thinking. I think he will. Yeah, as long as he doesn't turn up on set yeah. and think he's, do think he's Dr. Doolittle again. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, that was horrible. That was horrible. <laughs> yeah, we said, uh, didn't we? That was, that was like one of the worst films. <laughs> that was horrible. Bless him. It was his first thing away from the Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he did Doctor Dooley. I was like, oh, he's done. You know, he's good as a producer, and he's done some other yeah. good films in in between. Uh, just to get yeah. back to the yeah. Punisher guy yeah. in the striped shirt is the Russian. The Russian. There you go. Oh, yeah. Russian. close. German yeah. Russian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Russian. Same, uh, same. Yeah, I. <laughs> jokes, jokes. I, I am, I am excited to see him back. In the MCU, yeah, I think they will. They've got something really good for us. I don't think he's a great actor. He'll pull it off. They'll put heavy prosthetics on him. We probably won't even recognize him. Look what they did to Colin Farrell in the in in the, the, as penguin. the penguin. Yeah. So oh, I didn't even yeah. know that was Colin Farrell. Yeah. Until like I was like, oh my Jimmy god, ages. that's Colin Farrell. Yeah. I was like, I was I saw his name at the end and I was like, what? Who, where? <laughs> he wasn't in the film. Yeah. And then I I was speaking to the guys at Warner Brothers. I was like, guys. Uh, you said Colin Farrell was in this film. I saw yeah. his name on the poster. Yeah, I did not see him in the film. And he was like, <laughs> I, I worked it out about halfway penguin. through, yeah. and then my mate at the end was like, I thought Colin Farrell was supposed to be. In. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, so we we could get that. We could get that. For me, the reason why I'm always excited and giddy for somebody to come back on a project like this, yeah, and I feel like for him, it's a bit of a, a full circle moment for him because he started it. He's, he was always, well, he was always on Marvel's radar. He actually yeah. auditioned for Victor Von Doom in 2005's Fantastic Four. Oh, wow. So you could wow. imagine yeah. that full round circle to say, do you want to play Doom? I know Marvel originally asked you, but they didn't take him on because of his past yeah. issues that he had. Yeah. John he proved himself. To really... yeah. 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 I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like if he does play Doom, that mask has got to stay on. I know you're. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. I know you're paying. I I can't even imagine the amount of money he's going to get to be back again, and uh, what he and already what he commands for, for the role. <laughs> but um, I, for him, I think if he is Doom and whoever plays Doom, really, the mask does need to stay on. You need to have the quality actor who's just behind that mask, and you don't you can't you don't even care. Like, yeah, it's, it's like Vader, right? Like yeah. Mm. There's only one time when it happens, and that was fine because it was final. Yeah. Otherwise, you can keep it on because that yeah. is the character. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah, no, you know, I'm I sure was, he'll do great. Yeah, I was wondering yeah. though. If, imagine if Doom has been around the whole time. Well, what has been? <laughs> like, imagine if it because obviously you know you had the stuff that happened in um, what's it called where um, Baron. Zemo was from. Uh, they they dropped, they dropped the the, the, the city on it. it Begins was... with an S. Sokovia. Oh, gonna... Sokovia. Sokovia. That's... Imagine if Sokovia borders with Latveria. And I'm thinking, you know, we've already seen Baron von Strucker and his castle and stuff like that. Imagine if that castle was actually in Latveria, and Doom it's just has been, been... hanging out. <laughs> yeah. And Doom has just been secretly pulling strings from like behind the scenes for a while. Never know if they do it well. We it, that could that could really work really well. But we've got two years. Two years is it? Two years or a year? Yeah, two, two years. years. Yeah, we've got two years of waiting and speculating until it comes out. <laughs> the yeah. heat, does he link to? So I was reading on Google because obviously yeah. like I, said, I didn't really know much about the character, but and although he is crazy, super villainy, strong and stuff. Yeah. They said that the Phoenix and the Phoenix Force could take him down. Well, he's so always he's always like tried to link. Yeah, he's well. always he's always tried to in control, get control of the Phoenix. It's all about control, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It's all about control. It's all about power. It's all about control for him. Uh -uh. You know, so yeah. I feel I I, I could I could I could just picture there's 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 little bits where he could have been in the background now. Even like he could be paying what's her name, who's the power broker at the moment, to. Yeah, hundred percent. 
to, to do you reckon they might even show like bits and then flick back to him or something so that and then you'll be like i was right yeah imagine if they did you know <laughs> and then, uh, then they offered me a job tell me tell me some more about your ideas how we can bring doom in straight away <laughs> into six one six <laughs> I just feel like, because obviously so, where Sokovia was, and, and obviously you've got Scarlet Witch, you had um, Pietro, her brother, you know, I feel like, they, and they were in the basement of this castle. I just feel like Doom may have been, may, even maybe working as, uh, you know, undercover or mm -hmm. potentially giving them funding, the weapons that they were making. And when they were testing, mm. testing out the Tesseract and testing out like um, other Infinities, Infinity Swords, or maybe, you know, he's, went over and took over the the, the Red Skull's, like, uh, technology and stuff. Yeah. I think they need to do a good origin story, for, again, for the general public, for gem yeah. pop. Um, or maybe, you know, he's the one who trapped the Fantastic Four in maybe a Phantom Zone or oh. something like that. That'd be interesting. Definitely yeah, it interesting. will be. See how they sort of work it all in. <laughs> well, you know, obviously, or maybe he was, like... He went to. He was the first person to go to the ancient one, yeah. and figure out how to like you know manipulate if you've got an, a, an injured body part. Because if they're gonna have you know Reed Richards is gonna be a grown man in the, so maybe like a 25, 26, 27 in like the um in the Fantastic Four movie, you know maybe Doom obviously has now found a way to extend his life. He's all maybe frozen time slightly. Oh my god! Yeah, that'd be that'd be interesting. You know, he's, yeah, he's been in the, yeah, he's been some... in the Phantom Zone, and I'm just spitballing here, but I'm just trying to think like how to make. Like, you're so excited! I know <laughs> how to bring that gravitas of Doom arriving because he's mm. such, oh. he's such a planner. They will, like... they will, they will. I mean, they showed showed a sneak peek, didn't they? Of uh, I mean, we've got we're gonna have Galactus, Galactus, in, yeah, in Fantastic Four. So. It, they will do it on a grand scale where it won't be it'll be worth the wait definitely and mm -hmm. if the like, I mean we've got the Russo brothers back again so mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to give us something that's going to be fan service but yeah. good action for 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 the general general yeah. peeps to to get involved yeah, yeah. Great. all right you know what I think we've taken up enough of your evening kips you know obviously you're going to get back to the, <laughs> get so back to the kids I would like to, you know, again, uh, say thank you for joining us. You know, it's a pleasure to pick your brains. And obviously, like I said, I look up to you in this space of uh, podcasting and, you know, trying to build our channel and move things forward into like, you know, potentially becoming like, you know, jour journalists within within this um, within this thing that we love. You know, you're, like I said, you're a great inspiration. Um, so, you know, I want to thank you again for joining us. Don't make me blush, dude, man. You're going to make me cry here, like, man. What are you doing? Don't do, this. Don't do this. In the spirit of the Olympics, you were our first guest and you're our first returning guest. Yeah. So. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, honestly, like, as I say, like, the one thing I say is consistency. Like, continue doing what you guys do. It's great episodes. I love watching it every week and when you guys come on as well. Yeah. And just keep it up, honestly. Like, I couldn't, like, I was speaking to my brother just on an episode, uh, I think it was two days ago. Yeah. Uh, and he's already like, we've got to do another episode tomorrow. And I'm like, bro, this is like really hard to keep up with everybody at the moment. <laughs> uh, but I'm because he he's he's my anchor, he's my anchor beam. He's he's the yeah. guy that keeps me going because there are days where everyday life takes over. Yeah. It's hard enough to do the content full time yeah. when you're still working for exactly. that job. Yeah. Yeah. Family, kids, and uh it's just staying persistent and in, and just having fun with it. Don't look at the numbers. No, I don't care about numbers. Because you don't, you don't have to be like yeah. even with. You could still be a journalist, yeah. and you could still apply for those things. Mm. Numbers don't care. It's about who you are as a person and what they see, and the passion they see behind what you do. So yeah. continue having fun with what you guys do. Yeah, even even because even people. Said, yeah, just yeah. Like, hanging out with Debs is like fantastic. You know, what I mean, it's like. <laughs> yeah. I said the other week, I had such a rubbish day at work. I was like so tired and annoyed. Mm. And then I was just so happy at the end of the podcast. So I was like, ah, oh, everything's forget, fine. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything is because we forget we 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 have we have some luxuries that the the littlest things can give us so much joy. Yeah. And having that yeah. conversation 
with somebody can you know can change people's perspective in in such a different way and i didn't know that until we started our journey so yeah. long ago to 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 where it is now because like it's a uh, i still see it as me speaking to my brother because he lives abroad yeah and it wasn't because of yes it's amazing to get those opportunities mm. but i still get to have the people that i love around me all the yeah. time so uh keep it up thank you for having me on yeah guys yeah, I just, I just thought after, after, subscribe after, follow <laughs> subscribe follow yeah. subscribe follow yeah yeah so we'll comment your, engage yeah i'll put seriously. your details in uh, in for where everyone can find you again you know hopefully one time we get you and g-man on at the same time yeah yes it, definitely definitely that'd be good he's trying his best i think he's actually on one right now talking about deadpool and Wolverine. yeah with, uh, uh, there's i think uh, there's a podcast called what heroes do okay and uh, they're based in qatar okay uh, but he always reaches out and same thing man it's like whatever information i can give to to help people on their journey yeah uh, is, is a treat and a reward to me because knowing that i could inspire somebody to do something they love like that's repayment in a thousand ways more yeah. than somebody giving me a check that will probably last a couple of weeks yeah because of the Too situation this country is in free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like seriously like we just to just a quick plug and that's it's not for me yeah uh so i did a podcast with a uh a friend of mine he's a friend now uh two years ago uh about his cosplay journey his name is michael adji oh I yeah found that during that podcast. I, follow him, I follow him yeah yeah michael adji so i had him on an episode because he has an awesome like when i met him he was at the doctor strange screening yeah and he had the best cosplay outfit ever and i was like bro how did you put this together because his cape looked yeah. like it was floating when he was walking and i was oh, like yeah. he's got wires in it and it looked okay. amazing and i said <laughs> you know i'd love to get you an episode to go out your cos cosplay in the process of talking about that he's we spoke about mental health yeah and how boxing saved his life yeah and a director in in the same circle friends that i didn't know of Mm -hmm. reached out to me to say that episode has inspired me to write he wrote a script that night yeah and now they're making a film two years down the line so no. there's a kickstarter that the links are in my instagram and yeah. and uh tiktok and everything else and i'd love to see this movie come to fruition they they have got half the money so far Okay. And even if it's a little amount that anybody can contribute, you get your names in the credit of a movie. They yeah, like so they, they, yeah. yeah, they're doing a Kickstarter. They did, uh, there was another one, I can't remember what it was called, but they've started another Kickstarter. Okay. We need half the budget again. I'm trying to help out pushing as much as I okay, can. Tell you what, what a a movie do, got inspired. Yeah, what I'm going to yeah. do, I'm gonna, yeah. I'll cut this clip. And if you send me some more information, I have yeah, send the link. three people I know who are in the movie business. And maybe okay. I could pass something on to them and maybe give them some mm. contact information and they can get in touch with um Michael and from I'll drop you a message. your friend, the, yeah. uh, the, the, the writer. Rob, Rob, Rob Island and Michael Adju. Yeah. Uh, so, two great I'll, guys that I've met through that podcast community. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah maybe I can get definitely. them in touch with the, these three people and see if we can get something moving forward. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I'll, I'll send those over to you. But yeah, I just yeah. wanted to plug that, that be consistent. You could inspire anybody to get into yeah. anything just by just putting that passion out there. And I've realized we have important voices and we have uh, a, a major responsibility in the humankind, yeah. the human race that we that we can send out positive energy and, and goodness, goodness, goodness. And I'm happy to help where I can, guys. So let me know, reach out to me yeah. when it comes to what you guys want to do. Yeah? Amazing. All right, guys, yeah. thank you for joining us. This has been a very he heavy Deadpool Wolverine Marvel <laughs> podcast. You know, like I said, well, you know, if you've seen it up to this point, we probably spoiled the film for you anyway, but we did tell you ages ago. <laughs> yeah, switch off, put right? a spoiler warning on the front, remember? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we said switch off. But, you know, if you stayed with us, it just means you love us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and hopefully, right. uh, Kibs, I'm going to leave all his details, so you make sure you go follow the Brother Geek Out podcast as well. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us. I've been Clinton. Had the lovely Debbie, and of course, the enigmatic, the fantastic Kibla Ahmed. All right. Thank you for having me on, guys. All right, everyone. <laughs> be good. And if you can't be good, be the best at being bad. Bye bye. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> I love that. <laughs>